Hi, everybody, and welcome. Are you thinking barbecue season is over? How could it be? Well, in fact, it's not. There's so much more that we can be doing with barbecue before the frosty weather hits that might be coming your way this fall and winter. So in this video, we're gonna meet some great people who barbecue right into the fall. And stick around to the end because I've got some great tools that'll help you keep your barbecue in tip-top shape this fall. But first, you're watching Fun to Know with Carol. And I'm Carol, here with quick weekly videos that help interesting people like you connect with their curiosity. Now, on with the show. Summer is usually the time we think about breaking out the barbecue and spending time outdoors with family and friends. Whether it's in the backyard on a Saturday afternoon or hanging out with friends for a special occasion, the food always seems to taste better when it comes from a grill, doesn't it? Even for someone who doesn't eat meat, like me, I can appreciate the smells that come from a barbecue, including all the side dishes and fish or seafood. So I put on my curiosity hat when I was researching this topic and found a few people that were just fun to know. I want to introduce you to them so that you can hear directly from them how they keep the barbecue spirit going through to fall and even winter. First, I went to my local hardware store and was introduced to Skyler. He's the barbecue expert at Arroyo Grande Home and Garden. And he had a lot to show me, all the different makes and models. All the way from the traditional Weber gas grill to the newer Traeger pellet models and beyond. Since summer's wrapping up, I was curious to find out how he would use a barbecue on into the fall. Let's hear what he had to say. This is our fun little one. We like to call it the tailgater. Um, this is going to be perfect for, actually, as the name states, tailgating. <laughs> um, it's nice if you've got to go on portable options, like uh, let's just say you're going to go camping or you're doing a tailgate party at a football event. Um, if you have a newer end truck, like the nicer Ford Rangers or Toyota Tacomas nowadays, they have the plug-ins in the back of the bed. So all you have to do is plug this thing into the back, start it up, and you can start cooking. Wow, that's then, fun to know. Yeah, it's actually a lot of fun. You can just bring this thing, you can fold the legs actually at the bottom and take it anywhere you want to go. And uh, even if you have the like this Goal Zero stuff that we sell here, if you wanted to plug that in when you're out on a camping trip like uh, Lake Isabella where you don't really find a lot of uh, power anywhere, you know, mm -hmm. it'll be really fun to have that thing on there. And you can, shoot, what we cooked before? We've cooked uh, macaroni and cheese on one of these. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> so it's actually a lot of fun to bring with you. Yeah. Skyler had lots more models for me to look at, but I had to get moving on down the road. It was my nose that took me to my next stop because I was headed over to the little market in our neighborhood where in front of the market, Doug is the resident pit master. Five days a week, he's out in front of the market cooking tri-tip on a Santa Maria style of barbecue. And boy, does it smell delicious. Doug was trained as a tradesman, but when he moved to the Central Coast to be near family, he found he was able to do for a living what he loved to do naturally, and that was barbecue. Doug's got three pieces of advice for us, no matter what time of year you're barbecuing. So Doug, you've got some uh, great easy tips for people who are barbecuing. What are they? Three tips, don't overcook it, don't over season it and don't overthink it. So most people overcook their meat when it's on the grill. It uh, continues to cook for a little bit because it's really hot on the outside and the heat transmits to the inside. And don't over season it. You know, don't make it too salty that you're destroying the taste of the meat. And don't overthink it. If you get a big elaborate plan that you have to go through to cook your meat, it's just more places for it to go wrong. <laughs> That's great. That's great. So what if people wanted to continue barbecuing into the fall? But some of the people watching this video will be back east. And, um, you know, the weather's getting cooler. Uh, I've barbecued in the snow before. You just have to be careful about uh, getting the, the fire going out. So I put a cover over mine. Okay. And also, you got little critters flying around the air. You don't want them to uh, contaminate your food. Right, right. But, yeah, you, I barbecue in the rain here, too. Really? But, uh, yeah, I barbecued in Arizona and I barbecued in North Dakota in the wintertime, so yeah. It's, it's doable. It's okay. doable. Just All right. Different ways. Good. Thanks. 
Doug puts his own advice into practice every week, and he has quite a robust following here on the Central Coast, year round. Now it was time to reconnect, virtually of course, with someone who was truly a big man on campus when I was in high school. Granted, that was many years ago. Coming in at 6'9 is Al Vilcek, who was a star basketball player on my high school basketball team. He led the team in rebounds and scoring and even on to state championships, then went on to a three-year career with Louisville. But what does that have to do with barbecue? Well, Al's claim to fame now is his name of a different sort. He's Big Al's Slam Dunk Barbecue. He came back to his hometown, Cleveland, Ohio, and opened something that truly reflects his passion. And there's no shortage of people lined up to get a taste of Big Al's. So I got together with Al by Zoom to ask him specifically what people could look forward to if they didn't want barbecue season to be over and wanted to extend it into the fall. Well, here are Al's recommendations. Let's just listen. Well, so barbecue is a comfort food. So nobody wants to eat it every day, no matter what season it is. But in the winter, that's when we do our chilies, our Brunswick stew, and we do seasonal bread pudding. But it really doesn't go away in the winter. He caters these dishes, of course, but you could be grilling up something to add to a comfort food dish of your own. And what about advice? So if you had a, something that people who barbecue for themselves, if you were to give them your best piece of advice, that's something they may not know, um, what would that be? Don't be afraid to experiment. You have to create your own style because there are millions of styles of barbecue out there and there's no right and wrong. And you should never criticize somebody with barbecue because it's their style and their flavor that they like. So right. that's, that's what I tell people. They'll say, what should I do? I say, experiment, make it to where you like it. Don't take somebody else's word. And that's how I got started. Papa Charlie taught me to do this. And he was a master in South Carolina. And after two years of doing this on my own, I invited him to help me cater. And afterwards, he gave me a big hug and he says, you have far surpassed what I've taught you. Ah. That was huge for me. Yeah. That was huge because I took what he taught me and I made it my own. And that's what I tell everybody. They say, well, what rub should I use? I say, make one, mm -hmm. get a base, what you like, and experiment. Mm -hmm. That way it's yours. Yeah. That's, that's the biggest thing I tell people, make it your own. That's, that's great advice. Yeah, yeah, perfect. I'm a hell of a good pit master. <laughs> Al's advice, make it your own. Hey, they're great guys, aren't they? All three completely different styles. If you're hearing something here that was fun to know, how about hitting the like button? And thank you for subscribing. I really appreciate that. You do know that it's free, don't you? Free advice and cooking inspiration doesn't get much better than that. I hope you're inspired to keep that barbecue out and grilling for a few more weeks. And let me give you a little bonus piece of advice that I thought was really important. While I was at another local hardware store, I asked them what causes people to give up and shut their barbecues down way too early. The answer, they don't take care of it. So it's not a pleasant sight or experience. So if rust on your barbecue is an issue, the best way to combat that is simply to use it. Another good argument for barbecuing into the fall. But beyond that, there are some tools and techniques for keeping your barbecue in good running order, depending on whether it's a gas grill, electric, pellet driven, whatever you have. I've linked an article in the description below that gives you all of those steps. I think you'll find that helpful. It also lists some tools that are available on Amazon. I'm not an affiliate with Amazon, but I thought the tools were pretty cool. It seems every year there are some cool inventions that make it easier for you to do an even better job. Coming in at just around $21 is this grill brush. I'll also post a link for it in the description. There's no excuse once you have it clean and ready to put to bed that it's not in tip-top shape. You'll see lots of great tips in the article as well, whether your challenge is the lid or the base or the legs, lots of help there. And good news, 
I discovered the other day that September and into the fall, barbecues tend to be on sale. So if you've decided on a new one for next year, this might be the time to get it. So keep the barbecue open for a few more weeks. Make some comfort food as the days get shorter and cooler. And perhaps share your bounty with someone else because you know you're good at this. I hope you've met some fun to know people today. I'm working on a completely different topic for next week and I hope you'll join me then. Just know that I do appreciate you and your desire to learn something that's fun to know. Take care and have a wonderful week ahead.